rise and shine. Pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews. Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is now 8 a.m. You are listening to Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. And we've got a wonderful show for you guys today. We have a great interview. First, I got a lot of news to tell you guys about. A lot of good stuff going on here in the city. A lot of updates, a lot of December uh, sales and deals with some of our downtown Aurora businesses here. Shout out to all the businesses doing their thing to serve us all. But we got a great interview with a friend of the show, a man who is a dedicated public servant, and he is also running for Aurora Township Supervisor. That's right, we got Alex Arroyo on the show today. Ready for him, ready for him. Um, so we're going to get into that part of the episode and interview portion a little bit later. Uh, but for now, let's start off with what we've got going on here in the city. Uh, during the month of December, Peyton's Photography has a uh, holiday portrait session, six sets to, to, to choose from, excuse me, for uh, 275 for the holiday portraits. Peyton's Photography is located at 14 West Downer Place, and that's next door to All Spoked Up. The bike shop. Shout out to them. Do or Die Designs. 15% off hair care, free conditioning and treatment with color. December Special. That's what they got going on. Oxy Affordable Optical. Save $25 on $100 gift certificates. That's their special for the month of December. And I want to give a shout out to Oxy Optical because that's where I got my spanky slanky new frames from and people have given me compliments on my glasses and I always make sure to let them know that oxy affordable optical is the place to go happy days 15% off all glass happy days is located downtown Aurora on Broadway um, we got Treadwell coffee they have a buy a holiday drink and get half off a pastry special for this month La Quinta de los Reyes Ooh. Wrote those R's pretty good this morning for y'all. Uh, La Quinta has $5 hot punch and 20% off fajita plates for the uh, month of December. And we were talking about the $5 hot punch. Is that like warm sangria? Like some spiked Kool-Aid that's warm? Sounds really good. Um, Island Optical. Half off designer and luxury eyewear. And that's part of the end of the year sale for their December special. Gracie G Photography. Has two sixty two hundred sixty five dollar Christmas mini sessions for December. Pure Skin Solutions sixty five dollar lunchtime glow peel. Awesome. Um, so shout out to those Aurora businesses that are doing some great things. Now, also what came across our desk is we want to give a, a big shout out to the Fox Valley Build. Excuse me, the Fox Valley Building and Construction Trades Council. Some of their affiliates presented checks to the Fox Valley United Way for its annual holiday assistance program. The combined contributions totaled $3,300 that will assist with providing grocery gift cards for 119 families with 386 children who will be sponsored through the holiday assistance program. Uh, got a picture of that, and that's some really good news, so we'll be breaking that for you guys. Put that out there on Facebook and Instagram today. Uh, but the people presenting the checks were Mr. Charlie Siebert of the Plumbers and Tech Engineers, number 130, Ruben Calazzo, Admin District Council, number 1 of Illinois, Albert Alfaro, Laborers, number 582, and Rob Moreno from the Laborers, 582 as well. Deborah Rudell, CEO of Fox Valley United Way, and Kyla Britton, Director of Community Engagement, Fox Valley United Way. Shout out to Deborah and Kyla. Uh, we had an interview with them, and that was really cool. So you can go to our YouTube page or Spotify and check that out. Uh, Rob, excuse me, Brian Dahl, President of the Fox Valley Building and Construction Trades Council and Painters District Council Number Thirty. Mike Garish, Carpenters Local Number One Seventy Four. Brian McSherry, SMART, number 265, and um, also the IBEW, number 461, and Heat and Frost Insulators, number 17. IBEW stands for International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Shout out to all of those associated groups. 
A lot of news going on, y'all. A lot of news. Got to give a shout out to Mary Fultz and the Can Network. They have a Christmas toy drive. Donate unwrapped toys or adopt the family. And that's going from uh, till the 20th of this month. The drop-off location is Java Plus, 1677 Montgomery Road in Aurora. And also, there's a winter coat drive. New or lightly used coats uh, are collected with a special... If you guys hear that, that's an actual real train on this episode. We're right in the heart of downtown Aurora. We are it. All right. Uh, the winter coats. We really need... Um, coats for young kids. The youth really have to have coats uh, for them. So if you have some that are that your kids got too big for, please donate those. And again, the drop-off location for that is Java Plus, 1677 Montgomery Road. On Monday, Senior Meal Distribution drive through is happening once again. This is brought to us by our great state representatives of the 83rd District, Barb Hernandez, and of the 84th District, Stephanie Kipplewitt. Shout out to both of them. This is going to be taking place at 1200 East Indian Trail Road from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you have to register. We've posted this a million times, so hopefully you've, you know, taken the chance to get registered. But if you have not, we'll post it again to make sure that you do. And this is uh, for seniors who are 60 and above who reside in Kane County. They're eligible for five frozen meals. All right. And let's see here. Next in the news, Elf Behind the Shelf. Going until the 21st of this month, the Kane County Sheriff's Office is hosting the Elf Behind the Shelf. This drive through allows you to help those in need from behind the scenes. All donations will go to Pads of Elgin and Mutual Grounds Domestic Violence Shelter. There's a lot of items that are needed, including toys, used jewelry, um, kitchen appliances, hygiene products, uh, silverware, holiday gift wrap, and things like that. The drop-off location is 37 West 755 Illinois Route 38, and that's in St. Charles, Illinois. Shout out St. Charles. Shout out the Kane County Sheriff's Office. Shout out Ron Hayne, Judy Dawson. Yeah, now, friends of ours. You can go check out the Judy Dawson episode as well. It was awesome. All right. Uh, Saturday the 19th of December, Faith Lutheran Church is having their annual church nativity scene. During the performance, visitors will be invited to join the choir in singing traditional carols. After the performance, hot chocolate and cookies will be served and a petting zoo will be open. Guests are invited to take their own nativity scene pictures. The public is invited. Admission, parking, and refreshments are free. Shout out to Faith Lutheran Church. And last but not least, Wesley and Flowing Forth United Methodist Churches Temple B'nai Israel New England Congregational Church and the Art Bar Art Gallery all in Aurora are hosting Light Up the Night Candlelight and Community from 6 to 6.30 p.m. Monday, December 21st. Using the hashtag Aurora Light Up, community organizations, faith communities, nonprofits, and neighborhoods are invited to pick a location, bring candles, and stand together in unity and silence for 30 minutes. Uh, shout out to all of those faith organizations for the great stuff that they're doing. Um, that's really very cool. All right. And that, my friends, is the news for the day. And now we get into our interview with our friend Alex. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Curtis. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Likewise, likewise. Uh, so for those who don't know who you are, let them know who you are and where you're from. Well, again, born in or Alex, both of us side, St. Joe's uh, <laughs> Hospital. I'm oh, sorry, I haven't done this in a long time. <laughs> uh, I sat down for an actual interview. No, uh, born and raised in Aurora, my parents have always been civically engaged. Um, my mother's always active in St. Teresa Catholic Church. We've been there since, uh, since my grandparents came in the 50s to Aurora. That's always been our home parish. Um, my mother's always been a volleyball coach, assisting the uh, teachers there. My father was the first uh, businessman in Aurora, was a Latino business with a uh, car dealership. Wow. I'm one of the founding members of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce back in the 70s, along with the Chapa family, the Balderas family, the old families. And so we've always been instilled, and we ran in the circles like, oh, we got to uh, be civically engaged here in town. Right. Um, um, yeah, my, my background, I was always, there's always something going on in my life. I was eligible, I was a Boy Scout, I was St. Joe's Church, uh, but wow. we had to go, St. Joseph's, had a shot at Pigeon Hill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, in college, I got involved with Habitat Humanity. But what really changed my life 
was in 1996 with that Lewis University. Uh, we got to go to uh, Honduras to work at orphanages. And there's hungry people in the U.S. We don't see real poverty until you actually leave the country and uh, work with people, uh, uh, children who really have nothing, people who actually have nothing. Right. There was a, we, we worked at one orphanage, it was just 29 girls and two little boys, we ripped down the roof, put a new roof on, painted the place, put some fruit trees, but that was the first week. The second week, we actually had to work at a place called Casa Nutrición, a nutrition house. These are children who are dying in your arms. These are literally skin and bones, and it was just, I never, it's the stuff you see on TV, you never see in person, and that is what actually changed my life in 1996, and getting involved more toward uh, local things to help people out, because um, when you have a child dying in your arms, it, it, it changes you. Um, growing up, what impact did your mom have in your life? Oh, wow. Uh, because my dad was a self-employed businessman, she had to be mom and dad because he'd get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, was out the door by 8, home late at night. I mean, his business was literally was four blocks up the road from here. Um, so she had to be mom and dad many times. Right. And showing us the Boy Scout practice, the boys of football practice, uh, band practice, track practice. She, was, she had to be the go to, and we were lucky that most of our lives she was an at-home mom. Right. We were lucky, and, and I see now, when she had to go back to work, uh, my youngest brother was like, who's going to dress you for school? Because <laughs> we always had, a, we had, a, we always had a, at a home mom. I was lucky to have that early on. Right. Um, and seeing the work she does. Yeah. I've talked to you, talked to other people about people who don't have that mom at home or don't have that dad at home yeah. and, and how it's affected their life. Again, it's, like, it's not home mom most of my life. And when she would like to work, it's like, oh, you know, it's a hot breakfast for day, the cereal. <laughs> right. Um, so your your story of Aurora is different from others because you've been engaged civically, as you mentioned, from like being a young kid and being in different organizations and groups. A lot of people I talk to, um, they've you know grown up in Aurora, but perhaps they started getting engaged and things like that um, after college or maybe just in their professional capacity. Um, do you feel it gives you an edge having been in kind of on the ground floor? Yeah, but they get to, you got to know the uh, players early on. Right. My dad, again, with the Chamber of Commerce, but the old Chamber of Commerce. And all the guys in Merchants, the old Merchants Bank and old Second Bank. My dad, one of the bankers, was his business. And I got introduced to that world early. Right. Early. And uh, you got to know who the players were and, you know, who the mayor was. The mayor used to come in back then, Mayor Hill, and come visit our school. And, uh, uh, different parents would always stop by St. Teresa and say hi to us. Mayor Hill? Oh, yeah. That's... 1974, oh. 75. We get a lot of history on this show, so that's <laughs> yeah, That was yeah, five years ago. Wow. Yeah. Um, how has what's some of the biggest changes you've seen in Aurora from your time being young to now? Oh, my earliest member of uh, Aurora's fifty thousand people, forty six thousand driving. Welcome to Aurora, forty six thousand people. Wow. And my house right now, where it's at, was the city limits. The front was the far east side. My house, where I'm at right now, was the Far East Side. Really? Not like the Near East Side. I remember in 1975, 76, we had to go to Naples for something. We're driving down New York Street. You know, you're in the country, then you get to the Skylark movie theater. Then you drive <clears throat> to the corner of 59 New York Street, which is a four way stop. And like, oh, what's going on over there? Oh, they're going to build some stores, my mom said. And, and off to do the farmland to get to Naperville. And, uh, who and the by, and them all. by farm, I mean like there was just cornfields. Just cornfields. Oh, wow. After, yeah, from from Farnsworth Avenue to the movie theater to Skylark Drive-In up to 59. Then all the way down to Denver. It was all farmland. It was all farmland. What was downtown like at that time? Aurora downtown. Oh, I was like, so the like, key corner from here is a Robert Hall store. Where I got my first communion to that. Uh, <laughs> uh, my uncle worked at French Jerry. My aunt worked at Kresge's at the uh, lunch counter. And I thought it was cool to go see my aunt. Uh, just, oh, again, you know, you know just the uh, root beer float. Right. At the Kresge's lunch counter. But that's, you know, a block away from here. But, God, the, uh, there's a shoe store or where I think Tap on the Fox was. Right. There's a shoe store. I'm getting my, there's a picture of me wearing those shoes. I was so proud of those shoes. Me and Santa Claus in 1975. <laughs> I'm showing my age now. Um, no, it's, it's my hometown. I, I love it here. You know, the corn crib across from Paramount, 
we go in and watch a movie because there's, there's a movie theater back in the 70s, the Paramount. They showed the first one movies and go across the street and there's a popcorn to corn crib. Or a movie theater at the TV or the aisle. Just, yeah. Hmm. Like I'm showing my age. Um, well, they, they seem like really good times in Aurora. And other people I've talked to, when they talk about like how the, the vibrancy, guys, this is before the mall. Hmm. So all of the, the hustle and bustle. And all that kind of stuff was still happening downtown. Yeah, before. Scott was downtown right. Aurora. There's all this parking. There's a Walgreens uh, pharmacy downtown Aurora. What is Aurora's biggest strength? It, it's a cliche to say it's people. And there's a lot of industry here. There's a lot of self-motivation here. There's people that want to hustle here and, and, and create businesses here. Right. Aurora's hustle. Uh, it's always been that way. You know, it's an immigrant community. It's always been, you know, from the Luxembourg Romanians back in the 1800s up until today. Right. Now we're getting our Indians and Poles coming in. Um, in between there, everybody and their mother from whatever part of the world. And I learned, uh, our friend Dick Leonard, who's sort of a school board with me, taught me a lot of what happened post-World War II, and he was in high school in the 50s and 60s, so how Aurora changed when uh, the refugees came here. And they right. also were here along with uh, Union Street. Um, a friend of the show showed me some World War One veterans who had gone to, uh, who had been from East, you know, from Aurora, mm -hmm. and she showed me this book. And I guess Waldo was East High. Correct. That was crazy. I didn't know that. Correct. Uh, if you're on tour, let me know because I'm currently on the East Aurora School Board now in my sixth year. But uh, there's actually a plaque on the wall honoring all the World War One veterans. That's amazing. Yes. I would love to see yeah, that because camera line will take on a tour of it. Yeah. Um. She mentioned that, and I was just, I was like, I didn't know what was more interesting: the fact there's World War One veterans with a, with a strong history and presence in Aurora, or that, you know, what everybody knows the middle school was the high school. That's crazy. Yeah. Very few people know that. Yeah. And, uh, I know there's still a few people around that were part of that first class at the New East High, which uh, uh, Jackson and whatever. Of the uh, Fifth Street and Smith. Fifth, Fifth Smith Avenue. Street. Fifth Avenue Smith. Street. I should have gone for some Right. <laughs> um, so you're on the East Aurora School Board, yes. and you've been on this your sixth term. My the sixth year, middle of my second term. Yeah. Um, what's it like being on school board? It's there's always somebody mad at you. For good reason. Like, right. You have to explain to people what the facts are. Mm -hmm. It's it's the easy with the, with the social media to say, throw something out there. It smells like wildfire, and it's not even true. Right. Um, but it, it's, it's it, this has probably been the most stressful year ever. We're having two things a week at times just because of COVID and parents at home, and they basically become teachers uh, overnight. But in the past six years though, have been a lot of fun with um, what we've done with that. We've uh, started our first year fiscally with the uh, economic intern, um, the, the property value is still very low and uh, we we're hurting a bit uh, tax-wise. But now the property values are going up and dramatically up. Our finances have really stabilized. I think um, we were able to just do new programs such as uh, we're teaching Chinese language at the high school. Mm -hmm. uh, we have that brand new kindergarten center on, on uh, Indian Trail. Uh, and all kinds of little specialized electives that we didn't have before. Our, and the, the, the iron pods, this industrial kitchen, the kids actually are cooking in a restaurant setting and they actually have a classroom as a restaurant at the same time. And, uh, and it's before COVID, of course. Uh, yep. <laughs> We're coming to you live from downtown Aurora, folks. That's a real train. <laughs> I would be boss to overcome the train. But, uh, <laughs> The most difficult, this has been the most difficult year we've had. Yeah. We had little things like the, the, the number one accomplishment of anything was getting the school buses for East Aurora. We're the, the last school district in the state to have school buses. We were told for 20 years, well, you can't have buses because it costs an arm or legs, cost an arm legs, and cost a $40 million for under one that. We got it done for $2.5 million, put in the budget, and called it a day. Simple. That was a big. But you have to have, but you have to have the will to do it. Right. That was a big, uh, that was a big win for the school district. That was a big win. I remember reading uh, headlines about it and things like that. But also, um, if I'm not mistaken, even in uh, the Beacon News, like the East Aurora finances are in good shape. Um, and the uh, the quality of the district and everything, all those are on the rise, all right, the yeah, good I think things. we're on part of the Aurora as far as graduation rates and uh, test scores. Right, and you also have, uh, East Aurora also has the um, largest 
N J R O T C in the country. In the country, that's correct. Yeah, that's right. It's very popular. It's very popular. Um, all of that knowledge of the way the school district works um, and the way the city works, getting along and forging those relationships, does that make a good leader? Yes. Did you surprise that the things you learn being in school, especially the finance aspect, it's just not easy. Oh, we're going to do this tomorrow and just set money aside. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, no. And just, just some discretionary fund, but you have to plan everything in a year. And for things like don't like, we were not, COVID just kind of not far. They caught, they caught the city, the township, the state, the federal, and down to your local municipalities like the park district. It cost everybody off guard because also you're shut down. Um, and we don't collect sales tax, but the, a city that collects sales tax or a state that collects income tax when no one's working, no one's spending money, that hurts the bottom line. Was there, and I don't want to misstate, um, but was there a shortage of laptops for the kids for remote learning at one point? At one point we were in time, we on our way to go okay. on one already. Okay. Um, we just uh, we just used our COVID money and bought the, the final ones. Plus, we took our older ones. We had sure. three thousand Chromebooks that we had surplus. We actually lent them though. We also to the schools. Okay. Uh, so we were asked for help. Three oh eight. Three oh eight. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and they they asked for help, and we they said we had three thousand books we can lend you. Shout out to Oswego. No, I really. And our superintendent's been phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. Just first year superintendent, this just falls in our lap. Yeah. That's something she may be back for Dr. Norell. Okay. Dr. Jennifer Norell. Set it up. Yeah, Set yes. it up. <laughs> um, no, it's up. But it really just, this COVID thing has really got everything up in the air. Yeah. I, 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 I feel bad for the kids that want to, like, do cooking or do woodworking or do auto shop. Yeah. You can't do that all. It's, I came back into that online. Um, let's talk township. What is the Aurora Township? Are we in township right now? We're physically in Aurora Township. Okay. Um, it's on the west, is the uh, uh, Orchard Street, Orchard Road. Okay. Orchard Avenue. Uh, on the eastern border is the county line. The southern border is also the uh, Kendall County, King County line. Okay. And the north border. Roughly is parallel to Butterfield Road, it kind of bisects it. But okay. Yeah, so it's parts of North Aurora, parts of Montgomery, a little sliver of Oswego, a city of Aurora, and then, of course, Aurora Township, like Marywood, Monkerville, the unincorporated parts. Um, it's a 36 mile square. So about how many people are in there? 140,000, roughly. Wow. We're using for the like, census numbers to come out. Right. Um, and you're running for township supervisor? Yes, sir. Very cool. I'm Very excited cool. about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of five hundred feet out of here, and yeah. a lot more people. <laughs> um, I've seen you with I've seen you meeting folks, seen your signs around town, uh, but I'm I and perhaps others are probably unfamiliar with what a township supervisor does. What's the role of a supervisor? Well, a supervisor is the chief executive of the township government, and you're there with four trustees, and uh, you are the government of and the legislature, the executive council of the township. You know, our primary responsibilities are senior services, youth services, and general assistance for the those who actually have nowhere to go for right. financial assistance. Right. Um, so some of the uh, complaints that I've seen in regards to the township are that, A, nobody knows what the hell it does. There's no type of anything people could watch. Uh, do you guys have, are there meetings? Uh, well, our school board meetings are on, uh, are available on Zoom, and anyone can join. And yeah, we school, have a yeah. meeting in person. Township. Well, schools are. I'm not a member of the township government now. Oh, I'm not a member of the township government. Right. Now. I'm running for for the position of supervisor. Oh, uh, but it seems like there's like people have. Do do they have meetings that people can watch? They can. They have, uh, they're not. As far as I know, they're not streamed. They're not recorded. Okay. That's one of my priorities. Number one is in my transparency is meetings will be available online. Hopefully, live stream with ACTV or recorded and available for public view later on YouTube. Right uh, now, the township building is that Dutch style building on Broadway across from the fire department. The old Seven Gables restaurant, yes, right across uh, Seven North Broadway, Eight North Broadway, right next to across the parking lot from my King Dolores Reyes. Right now, that's the headquarters. Yes, sir. Okay, the, and go then the official government building. The official government building. Now, you guys are also in charge of the youth center on Gale Street. Correct. All right. Um, with the huge field back there that you guys is too? Uh, I can't answer that. I don't know. Okay. Um, 
the, cause I think part of it's in the YWCA, YMCA land. Oh, okay, that's right. And um, I don't know what kind of partnership they have with the park district. Our schools partner with our park, the park district for land sharing, so I can't answer that. Okay. Um, what's your, besides transparency, what are the other goals that you uh, have for the township? Oh, fiscal responsibility, for sure. Um, that's all. I want our budgets to be open, transparent, like every check will be posted, everything will be available online for people to see and peruse. Correct. Right. The transparency and responsibility. Um, we haven't had, like in East Aurora, we haven't had a tax increase in six years, yet we were able to get all these things done. And I, as far as I understand, now, the township's in their fourth tax increase in three years, yet nobody knows what they do. Yeah, nobody knows what they do. Nobody. It, it seems to be one of those uh, local you know, just, just 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 local structures or anomalies. Like nobody knows what's going on, who's doing what, mm -hmm. who's voting for this, how much money is it, you know. The, the four, there's three executives, there's a supervisor, there's a board commissioner, and then there's a assessor who does the, uh, sets the values of your homes for property taxes. Hmm. Um, how long has the township been around? Oh, God, it's, it's a regional form of government, dating from the English times in the U.S. Wow. You know, uh, Illinois townships, uh, New Jersey, New York, they all have townships still. It's, it's the oldest form of government. Amazing. I mean, there was Aurora. Before this was, there was two towns. There was East Aurora. There was Aurora, then West Aurora, then Aurora Township. Thanks to two school districts. We were still two towns back then. Wow. Interesting. Uh, well, when it comes to knowing your history, brother, you got it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, a bit of a... That, that was a mini thing with that. We named our school, are we East Aurora or Aurora East? Because we were always, East, Aurora East was always just Aurora, then it was West Aurora. Got it. And then North Aurora. Right, right. And if, if some of the historical society, correct me if I'm wrong, I, please let me know. Yeah. I'd love to know that. Um, that's the way I always understood the history. Right. When are the elections? February 23rd is the primary, or uh, April 6th is the general election. All right. And the winners of the February 23rd primary won the general election in April. Um, you ready? You seem ready. Oh, I'm not excited. I'm yeah. Fun. Um, what has campaigning been like in COVID? It's, it's, it, it is more difficult. Um, petitions were hard to get. We did a couple drive through with uh, several candidates organized on pay, drive up, and send my petition. Uh, some door door was done, gave people advance notice, have in your neighborhood, you call ahead, um, never use pens again. It's just, it's just been hard. The petition was always, was legal because the last primary was in March when everything's got hot. Right. The then by November, things seemed to stable off for a little bit over the summer, and then November came again, and then things got hot again, and so it was just, it was difficult in November, GOTV, and now we're the same probably again in February, because now it's getting worse. Right. Right. No, it's not easy for anybody. You know, it's, it's a difficult environment to be in. Yeah. Um, well, we wish you the best of luck in the uh, primary and the eventual election. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we interviewed Bonnie Kunkel, who's running for, I think, trustee. Correct. That was a great, we had a great interview and discussion with her. Bonnie's a great lady. She's a great, I mean, she's been on the uh, former King County board member, and Bonnie's a, a tough, tough lady. I just admire her so much. Even talking to her and the questions that we asked her about Township, even that was eye-opening. Because, uh, you know, I, I think Township might be the most le the most least known mm -hmm. entity in the in Aurora period. You know, mm -hmm. people know more about what's going on with the Copley building and various construction projects than they do with the damn mm -hmm. Township. Mm -hmm. um, I saw your signs on the east side. I've seen some on the west side. Um, you got signs to drop off today? Oh, that's what we do it later on, yes. Yeah. Saw a picture and you got a big stacks and stacks and stacks yeah. and stacks of signs. Big st yeah, they got, they got delivered last week and got to get them out. So if you want one, let me know. Yeah. How can people uh, contact the campaign and, and find uh, out more on about Facebook, it? Okay. Uh, Alex Rora for Aurora Township Supervisor. Okay. Uh, you can email me at Alex for Aurora, F O R Alex for Aurora at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, it's got an Instagram page set up. Gotta figure that out still. Technology is, I'm, I, I, I still call videotape and recording things. It's a different. You still got VHS in them. <laughs> I got some tapes on my transfer DVD. Yeah. Was no one use DVDs anymore? Use flash drives. Right. Um, 
Yeah, uh, contact or streaming a movie, you know. Or call 630-605-9694. Again, that's 630-605-9694. Nice, nice. Um, we're, we're in downtown. We're still in panic, mo uh, excuse me, pandemic mode. Uh, but it seems to me and to other people that the city still has a breath of life in it. Things are still going on. Still see uh, development taking place. Um, how do you feel about the outlook of the city? Well, River Township, you know, I would want to part with whoever the next mayor of Aurora is, I'll be working with them. And I intend to be a partner with them um, uh, to move Aurora forward. Right. Um, if the city's a city, the township, we, gotcha. again, we just have the most impact would be the, um, the unincorporated areas. Right. Which is pockets on the east side of the Marywood area, southeast side of Mocraville, southwest Aurora, around um, the country club. Those are the unincorporated pockets. Gotcha. Um, transparency, fiscal responsibility. Oh, and community engagement. And community, and community engagement. Community, no, one knows what we, no one knows what Tasha does. Right. You know, you know, once the pandemic slows down, we can start visiting people again, having events in parks again. It, the the pandemic, especially with being on the school board, I miss going to the classrooms, visiting the kids. I miss seeing what's going on. Right. And I'm sure other elected officials, whether you have a park district board or a library board or a county board, you miss seeing your your partner fruits of your labor. You really miss seeing the fruits of your labor. I'm sure even the president feels that way in the United States. Right. You just can't. Oh, let's go visit our hospital. Right. Uh, and visit troops. Uh, it, the pandemic has really changed things. Tell me about. Indian Trail and the East Aurora building over there. Is, that's an academy, is that correct? Uh, it's uh, Benavides Steam Academy. Benavides Steam Academy, that's right. It was right. originally a kindergarten center and now it's a kindergarten first and second grade. That was a big project. Yes, we actually bought the rest of the building, the rest of the strip mall to make a, um, to make a, a full, the full school center now. What's it like, how does it feel being part of that? Oh, it was exciting because uh, we teach because uh, our school First off, we went all kindergarten and preschool all dual language now. So every kid is learning English and Spanish uh, together, half a day uh, English and Spanish. And then they, as the kindergarten progress to first grade, they move along. They move along with it with their age group. And that's uh, and then between science, technology, um, engineering, art, and math. You know, the A in STEAM is art. That's right. Not STEM, but STEAM. You know, kids need the art artistic outlet too. Right. Uh, yeah, congratulations. Congratulations no, to that. It, it was, those are some of the easiest sports to take. That's a bit you know, people whine about, oh, you're spending money on this. Yeah, it needs, it's an investment. It is an investment. Right. One well, of my colleagues, Bruce Schubert, on the school board, when we were getting ready to build a high school, people complain, why are you spending money on those kids? Why are you spending money on those kids? He says, he, he, he put in my head, and this is a shot to Bruce Schubert, our kids deserve the same facilities as the kids in Naperville do. Kids in Aurora, East or West, whatever you go to school, deserve the same facilities as any kid in Naperville have, that does. That's true. The same equal access to right. education and education opportunities. And you open the door, you can't make them up through it, but you have to give the kids the opportunity to do it. Right. And clean, well heated or well air conditioned facilities. My, you gotta check our, our digital photography. The progress is all Mac computers and the, the, the artwork the kids are posting on my art. It's just incredible. Nice. Yeah, if you want to go through the high school someday, let me know. Bring your camera along. Awesome. That'd be great. Good morning. Now that it's quiet. Good morning show. Yeah. yeah. Now that it's quiet, our, our, our the old high school had one band room, one choir room, and now they have three band rooms plus individual practice rooms, actual lockers for the kids, um, the theater construction. We actually teach a different class on theater construction. Because you take this doing and go somewhere with it and get a job and theater construction. Um, again, it, it, those are some of the easiest votes to take, but they, you, you get some pushback. You know, why is it at those kids? Hey, those kids deserve an opportunity to let their creative outlets out. But I did start, but I also had to require a reading class. That was a, uh, that was a, uh, we did get some pushback on that. Hmm. Required reading. Requiring? People are pushing back on requiring. Well, they, well, they, well, they, well, they, Damn you, motorcycle! Was it? <laughs> um, no, uh, it was, if you couldn't get below a certain grade in reading, you had to take a reading class in lieu of elective. Huh. 
So surprisingly, next year, the next year, all, all the readings were shut up. <laughs> 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 that was the surprise. Nice. When the kids were told, okay, you take reading or elective, you get, the reading score shot up. Um, the show ends on a positive note. What is your message for the citizens of Aurora today and township going yeah, into so, the So the Aurora, North Aurora, Langomery, Osfield, and Aurora Township. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the full <laughs> message for all of them. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm your local guy, born and raised here from the streets of uh, the, the neighborhoods of where I should say. Uh, you know, I'm the local guy. Uh, I've always worked hard to do what's best for my town. You know, my seniors, my parents are seniors. I see what they're going through. I understand that. My neighbors' kids, I see how they're struggling. And that you were talking about Mary Fultz. Mary Fultz is really I've known her for years. Her activism. I mean, she's really got me involved, especially with the summer, mm -hmm. with her work, and you seeing what's. You live, we all live in our own bubbles, especially now with COVID, we all live in our own bubbles. Mm -hmm. And getting out of that bubble, like, oh, there's people that have different experiences than what we're going through right now with the pandemic. Right. Yeah, I'm lucky I was able to keep my job and keep working. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have had that luxury. Right. You know, I, I was put out there, you know, if you want to eat out, order your carry out from a local restaurant. Right. Uh, you know, Bluebird Hill, Mike and Nieces, wherever you can, uh, to Cutty Plum downtown, uh, Gilderson's, Valley Doyle, La Usamba, they're hurting. So you can't once a week help the local economy, help the local business out, you know. Nice. But you don't realize that because when we were shut down, you actually started grocery shopping again. <laughs> right, yeah. But everything was like really close, like, oh wow. You didn't realize it. And it didn't hit to like the second, third week. Mm -hmm. Um. We appreciate you coming on to the show today. Oh, happy to be here. Yeah. Happy yeah. to be here. We appreciate you coming on, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the primary you, and the election. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah. Um, so, on behalf of the Second Largest City's First Daily News Podcast, this is a great interview with a friend of the show, Mr. Alex Arroyo, running for Aurora Township Supervisor. Um, folks, get out there and vote. The voting is not yet done. Um, be blessed. Be safe. All of this day and month you guys and check out the downtown aurora businesses for all of their december specials yes and with that we are out Peace.